We're here at ISNT Water today. I'm joined by Katie Greenland from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. Katie, good morning to you. Thank you very much for, for, for presenting. You just had a very interesting paper, a very interesting presentation on, in terms of your work in Ethiopia. You mentioned there you're looking at behavioural change using methods developed by uh, Dr. Val Curtis from the NHSTM. How were those methods taken up? Were they, how are they, you know, perceived by the people you, you, you're working with? How, how did that? Mm. So the approach I mentioned um, by Val Curtis and Bob Orger is called Behaviour Centred Design. And it's actually a framework for intervention design and evaluation. Because there's evidence that suggests that to get the most effective interventions, they need to be based on theory. But you also need to have a way of evaluating your interventions to see whether or not the pathways to change that you were trying to achieve in your intervention actually took place. And um, so this framework we used at the formative stage because again, if we want to um, develop an intervention that's based on theory, it's helpful if when you're trying to design the intervention, you also use theory. That's a very fascinating approach. Um, we live in, we're living in the age of M&E measurement evaluation. We've got a workshop coming up later this afternoon on that. A lot of the NGOs that we, we, are, you know, we work with are under more and more pressure, if you want to use that word, to deliver M&E, to show measurement evaluation. And my question to you is that you mentioned there that the predominant metric that's being used out there in terms of latrines is that of measurement of the number of latrines. Mm -hmm. Is that damaging? Is that, is that the right measure in your opinion, given this framework that you've mentioned? What, what type of metrics would you like to see brought into that? Um, well, I think it is damaging because, of course, um, having a latrine does not mean that the latrine is being used. And there's the danger that a lot of work is being done to construct latrines, but it's not um, being done alongside appropriate promotion of latrines. Um, so actually now with the Sustainable Development Goals, you need to have a latrine with handwashing facilities as well. Um, and I think it's not very difficult in a survey to make sure that you're actually measuring whether or not the latrines are hygienic and appear to be being used. Um, of course, that's only a proxy for use, but it's much better than just measuring whether or not there's actually a latrine there, which could be locked, it could have collapsed, it could just not be in use yeah. at all. It's a dead measure, mm. in, in essence, mm. in terms of where we are now. So research, you know, researchers have developed metrics and indicators for assessing um, whether latrines are in use, such as um, Mimi Jenkins at the University of Florida. She's okay. developed a scale um, which we've applied um, elsewhere and, and adapted to see um, a measure of different types of indicators of whether or not a latrine is in use. I mean, that's very interesting you said that. How modular I don't know if that's the right word, but how modular is this behavioural framework that you're using? Can you put, because this is about collaboration, so if you're talking about someone in Florida, are you open to having more metrics added to your overall framework? Is it, can it accept that? Is there capacity there? Well, the framework is much more about um, a structure for design and evaluation along a theory of change. You then need to have appropriate indicators to measure all the different elements along your theory of change. And by that I mean, was an intervention actually implemented? Um, if you're trying to, say, promote latrine usage, you know, did, um, did it change some of the determinants of latrine usage and the reasons that the intervention was actually um, done in the first place? Did it actually change behaviour? So we're always looking for better indicators because on a large scale it's very hard to measure actual behaviour. So on that basis, and I mean, you know, this is a conference you're here, obviously the networking going, there's all sorts of um, you know, stuff going on, people meeting with each other. I'd just like to ask, is there anyone in particular or a type of NGO or type of you know, government person or a type of uh, you know, in private sector that you would really like to leverage, uh, you'd like to collaborate with in the future, given this need for different metrics and a, you've got a modular system that can be rolled out to, in different areas, would you, what type of partnerships are you looking to form? Well, certainly today I was talking about trachoma, and I see that we have Fred Hollows Foundation here who funded the work that we did, also Sight Savers, a lot of different organisations working in similar kinds of ways to develop behaviour change interventions. Um, so 
I think it's very important that there is more cross-talk and communication. Um, also, for any kind of real change to come about, it's really the the government yeah. representatives that we need to have around the table because we need to know what it is that they need yeah. from us to be able to make the changes that they need to put into place yeah. at a large scale. I mean, the, the role of governance, we've seen one of the big success stories in NTD is the eradication of guinea worm from Carter Centre, done largely through behaviour change. And one of the greatest things they did was they really unified all the different, the, the endemic country ministries of health to then give them accessibility to these areas to start education programs. How far are we away from, in your opinion, from that scenario where you can rely on the governance in endemic countries to help drive these programs forward or drive from formative research to an actual program? Um, I don't think we're far away. I think a lot of people are very interested in doing that. Actually, guinea worm, there are new cases, so that's. Um, but it, it is an example of um, a lot of behaviour change yeah. work, which could be done with a relatively simple transmission um, cycle and that could be interrupted. Yeah. Um, I think there's well in Ethiopia where this work is being done. Certainly, the government are on board and already involved in the work that's going on there. It's um, always about capacity and, and resources, and that's where I think technical support is often needed. Um, and in terms of the technical support, you're, you know, we're seeing this convergence, if you want to call it that, anthropology, behaviour change, smashing into parasitology, smashing into NGO works. It's all coming together, and. Oh, do we need a central data repository for data that's being generated? Do we need a lingua franca to common language to bring people together? Um, certainly conferences are always good, workshops, people sharing, um, academics as well often um, are very keen to share their results but not so much the methods that yeah. they're using and indicators and so um, I think some of that is systemic and quite difficult to change mm -hmm. but it's important that more kind of roundtable discussions are had and um, certainly for trachoma there's the big sort of um, global um, atlas and mapping yeah, yeah. and there's a lot of um, that for also for STH mm -hmm. so a lot of cross collaboration yeah. has resulted in some of these um, big mapping projects. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the framework so what we're trying to frame in this interview is how much that could become a, a kind of sta not standard but a standardised approach. You know how and how what how far are we away right. from people mm -hmm. use, using that method? You know. Okay. Well, it, it has been applied. It's at the moment only on on sort of more small scale. Mm. Um, but certainly, it's um, there are other frameworks as well, and mm. certainly it can be applied um, on a larger scale because it's very much a framework just saying think about theory when you're developing your program and make sure you measure it yeah. so that you know not just did we have an impact or not but why you know why did it work yeah. or why didn't it work is it that the um, intervention is inherently faulty yeah. and actually it wasn't the right intervention yeah. or is it that it wasn't implemented properly yeah. and they're very different um, yeah. answers and that would result in a very different direction for a program okay. and different policy decisions yeah. that would be made a, as a result and um, so certainly a framework such as the behavior center design is um, a very useful structure yeah. for anybody doing behaviour change work. Well, and that, that's something we wanted to pick up on actually and I'm sure from your talk you're very inclusive in terms of people reaching out, different groups. Can they contact you? Oh yes, absolutely. Mm. Katie, thank you very, very much. I hope you've enjoyed your morning here. I hope you can stay for longer. There's, you know, thank you very, very much for, for making the journey. No, thank you.